<clears throat> the views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of any major corporation whatsoever. Well then, Bunny, let's talk about books. You see, people say, hey, Steve, how do you stay so positive all the time? To which I say, I stay positive the same way the 80s band Wham! stayed positive with anonymous oral from strange men. Yay! <laughs> People also say, and, and speaking of anonymous oral from strange men, it's shocking to go back and watch early George Michael videos. Yes. And and think, so people didn't know? Yeah. <laughs> really? Well, like he's he... Like, he Stuff of his butt and jeans shaking his ass and like looking all nice. Like, really? People didn't know? He... He kept denying it, and I, he was the first person who who came out, and I said, like, well, big fucking surprise. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. Know? yeah. So, so anyway, he, he, he was caught getting, um, getting or giving or taking not sure what the situation was there but um oral from an undercover cop in a bathroom in la and uh then suddenly like oh my god he's gay okay now we all know that he's gay so now that you know that he's gay you go back and listen to his music and one of his big singles before he turned out to be gay is a creepy song called Father Figure. Yes. And I I really do feel that that song really does take a bizarre turn when you know that he's gay. <laughs> I will be your father figure. Put your tiny hand in mine. Yeah. I will be your preacher teacher. Like, it was already creepy when he was straight. But I just feel <laughs> that today takes a bit of a different it it, de- it definitely is a different seeming song when you know what? that he's gay. Uh, George mm-hmm. Michael. Uh-huh. His song Father Figure, it was a hit back in the 80s. That's I will great. be your father figure, put your tiny hand in mine. How? I will How be your preacher because teacher. He's homosexual, Steve. How is it different? You know Supernatural is about to come right back on right now. And I don't want you to miss this is a new episode. No, there's no difference just because of his sexual orientation. I don't okay. want you to be grouped into that uh, those assholes who are like, "Oh my god, homosexuals, they're child molesters." Cuz that's where you're going with this. That is the implication I just got from the bathroom okay. when I listened to you say that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a superpower. <laughs> yeah, you know, the bathroom was like, I don't know, two feet from him. And I wasn't. No, but that's sh- what I was getting. No, no, but I wasn't shitting on you. We're doing the French mistake next week. <laughs> the French mistake, honey. <laughs> People also say, hey. Write what you know. <laughs> yes. And what I know is that I have been a loyal and occasionally hardworking employee at my local bookstore for literally 17 years. Yeah. If my career was a person, mm-hmm. then it could legally pilot a helicopter and donate blood. Yes. And as such, I really do have my tiny skeletal fingers on the pulse of the book world, and I am here to rub my uh tiny skeletal fingers all over your face with this week's installment of notes from the bookstore dun 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 Thank you. and i would once once again yes i would like to once again emphatically state that this segment of the podcast is 100% fictional okay yes. it's fictional I, I, I'm not talking about any specific uh, 
corporation? Not right. at all. It's all fiction. So when I say uh, that my employee Randy was kidnapped by the secret police, that's that's all fictional. Okay, yes. not serious. Okay. Right. Uh, welcome to Night Vale. You don't have to take this so literally. So when we did that bit about how Satanists ran story time, that totally yes. didn't happen. Totes fictional. Yeah. Totes. And uh, when I talk about my manager in California named Will, who used to be homeless and wore the same bulky Cosby sweater every damn day, even in 115 degree weather, causing a nasty <laughs> big pen like stench cloud to follow him everywhere. And he would always have a small notebook and pencil in his pants pocket so that he could write pertinent information down that might be of assistance to him if he ever became homeless again. Like, let me write this down. Pizza shop. Arden and Howe Avenue, free bread on Sundays. <laughs> so when I talk about my manager from California who did nothing to help me when I was robbed at gunpoint at work, and mm -hmm. when I later developed PTSD from said robbery and said manager, Will, picked on me and wrote me up constantly and took every chance he could to ruin my life so that I would be moved to quit so that he wouldn't have to fire me, 100% fictional. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. It's all fake, yo. D don't, even, don't even trip, dog. I just made that person up and just made that <laughs> highly detailed story up. 100% fictional, okay? Yes. Just a great writer. Exactly. Yeah. You know, people want me dead. Not me, yes. literally, al although I have a few exes that no doubt would like to get me in their crosshairs. <laughs> people, people want bookstores dead. Or, or, at least, or at least if they don't want them dead, they expect them to die very soon. Yes. On my first I, I day feel the same way. I, I, yeah. Yeah. On my first day working on the floor, working with customers, on my first day, I, I was... Helping, I was at the register for my first time at the register, and somebody asked me all these things. And I need you to look up this, and I need you. I, I want to see if it, I, I have a coupon, and it, does the coupon work? And and I was having a hard time, and I said, "I'm sorry." The the person said, "Is it a guy? Is mm -hmm. there a problem, young man?" And I'm like, "Sorry, this is just my first day on the floor, my first time at the register, my first time helping people. I apologize." Yeah. And he said, "This is your first day." well, why did you pick a bookstore to work at? You know all these bookstores are closing down. You can get everything on the internet. You won't have this job for a month. <laughs> and once again, I'd like to state that was 17 years ago. Yeah. And yet people still, like when I was on the floor, now I'm hiding and receiving, listening to uh, Pakistani rap songs. Yeah. And uh, wearing jeans and a Night of the Living Dead shirt, uh, not giving uh, two craps about the customers because I don't have to like pay attention to them anymore, and it's wonderful. Uh -huh. um, I'm also the only person at work that has a set schedule. That's also another weird thing. Yeah. I have to be there at specific times for when we get delivery, so I am literally the only person in the entire store that has a set schedule. Mm -hmm. not, e not even the store manager. Gets a set schedule. I'm the only one. Really weird. That is like weird. no more open, no more closing for me. Like I, I this is exactly when I work. It's really great. So when I was on the floor, when I was helping people on the floor, when I was a book seller and helping people, yeah. there there wouldn't be a month that went by without someone saying that we were going out of business. Yeah. And and, and you're fighting the good fight, but sooner or later, I I gotta say, I think you're gonna lose. Yeah, but you know? but then again, but then again, that's what everyone has said to me for 17 years. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, it's, look it's, how look how quick Blockbuster died. Funny. Yeah. Hi. Yeah, yeah. He, he's saying good night. Good night. Good night, Maxwell. He, yep. Good night, Jeannie. <laughs> Good night, Jeannie, yep. he said. 
people literally look at us like we're the last remaining blockbuster video or we're JC Penney's or Radio Shack or something. Yeah. It, yeah. It, so, so Radio so, Shack, Radio Shack hung on for a really long time. Much where I longer, was where I was uh, convinced that the mafia had to have been funneling money through Radio Shack. Well, the there's one reason why uh, Radio Shack lasted for as long as they did, and that's just the American public's desire to purchase a robot hand that they can arm wrestle with. Yes. <laughs> the toy robot hand that they can arm wrestle with. That's the only reason anybody would ever go into a go into a Radio Shack only for that robot hand, people. That was uh -huh. it. So, so I, I was going to ask the question, are bookstores dead? But I think there's a more important question here. If the majority of Americans think we're going to die, does it matter if bookstores are dead? Like, I think, like, I, I, I think the problem is not that, oh, we're going to be closing down soon. The problem is that the majority of Americans already expect that to happen. And if the majority of Americans already expect bookstores to close down, right. then doesn't that already seal our fate? Um, you know? Yeah, I see where you're going. Like, it's a, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy at this point. Yes. So many people believe we're closing down that eventually we're going to close down. I used to get so sick of being at the register and people come in and I go, hi, welcome. Can uh -huh. I help you find anything? No, we just, we didn't think you were still open. <laughs> Where's your travel section? You moved your travel section. I'm like, yeah, you know what? I've been working here for uh, five and a half years at this location. And one of the first things I did when I started working here five and a half years ago was move the travel section. <laughs> So just FYI, we did move the travel section five years ago. Yes. <laughs> Something tells me you're not a big reader. No. Yeah. I'm just frustrated. People constantly accuse us of going out of business and have for 17 freaking years. Even after, uh, it, probably uh, the, the public hasn't noticed this, but we have constantly tried to reinvent ourselves. So many flipping times we they, we had a huge push for e-readers for a long time just yeah. this mass e-reader push when uh oprah had her book club we suddenly became uh, you know the 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 home of all things oprah we yes. were like the oprah store we had the oprah section so many puzzles we were like we were like the puzzle capital of the world for a while there collectibles <laughs> you, can, you can still go into like like our store and buy like a hundred and fifty dollar uh, Star Wars bust, you know, like those busts yes. that you would see at the comic book store. Yeah, you can get that at our store now. <laughs> and and we we've partnered with all of these uh, record companies. There are LPs that we get that you can't get anywhere else. Exclusive LPs. Really? Yeah. By yeah. anybody good. Um, a lot of them are, hey, here's here's the Guardians of the Galaxy soundtrack, but uh, the Barnes and but but the 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 exclusive that we have is this is both the soundtrack and the score together. You can only get that with us. And then we had okay. some sort. Of <laughs> yeah, and then we had some sort of. Then we had some sort of like here's here's a cover that you can only get with us. Here is uh, like the Rocky Horror Picture Show, but the record itself is all red. You can only get that through us, nowhere else. Yeah, and then we started uh, reprinting old LPs, like Chuck Berry's first record and stuff like that. Uh huh. Okay. Fats Domino. Here is uh, um, here is uh, some old singer. Here is the the original first album, first printing exactly how it looked of Buddy Holly when he first released his first album as Buddy Holly and the Crickets. You can only get that through us. We're an LP store. 
Funko Pops. <laughs> yeah. Funko Pops mm-hmm. are the new Beanie Babies. We have so many. So many. Well, well, yes. okay. So, so are, are we thinking that your store might be able to make a pivot? That's what I'm thinking. I've, I've, I've had numerous conversations with managers before at the yeah. store because I feel that, and I, and I, I, I honestly think I'm the only employee who thinks this way, but I feel that too many people who work with our company still see themselves as booksellers. Oh, we are booksellers. Yeah. We sell books, focus on books. Be sure and know the new books books that came out but then when you see the numbers Uh we're like we're selling is 60 percent of the things we sell are toys yeah Mm -hmm. like the majority of the money that we're making right now is coming from music and coming from funko pops and coming from board games and coming from comic book collectibles and a small amount of what we sell are coming from books so maybe we should focus less on what new books are coming out and focus more on what games have we gotten. Yeah, that's what. Do, do what you new notice? Those came out. Do you yeah. notice these sections gaining more real estate in the store? So much, so much more real estate. So much more real estate. Within the last year, we have we have severely shrunk our uh, gra- our. Uh, adult activity section we have a very small amount now of adult coloring books and uh, uh-huh. dot dots and paint by numbers and all that adult uh, activity crap and so much more uh cards against humanity mm-hmm. and the house on the hill and all these board games and tabletop games i guess yeah. is what they're we have so much more of that and and cutesy toys and things from Japan and <laughs> a lot less of some sort of popular things that we used to have a lot of. Yeah, no, there is a big pivot, but, and, and I, I think we could do it. It's just, there are still people who are like, Oh, you sell magic, the gathering cards here. Yeah. Like, yeah, we have a huge section of magic, the gathering cards. <laughs> yeah. People don't realize what we have. People don't realize some of the good stuff that we have. That's that's you know? interesting at pivoting over to toys and games. That would be they're really going to have to rebrand themselves. Yeah. You know. There's another there's another thing that we do that that I like a lot and that we don't promote and it's the fact that we have exclusive partnerships with a lot of authors and with a lot of publishers and so sure you can get this team book uh-huh. cheaper on the internet but if you buy it through our company we have an exclusive version with a cover you can't get anywhere else with an interview with the author and a short story that you can't get anywhere else yeah like if you buy we have a lot of exclusives that yeah, you can buy this cheap on the internet, but we are the only people who have like the DVD extras for this book. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. So this book comes with a, a short story. This book comes with a uh, free poster. This book comes with a, an entire new section. This book comes with a handy guide at the end that you can remove and take with you. And mm-hmm. you can't get that anywhere else. You can only get that through us. It's an exclusive for us. Yeah, it's it's kind of reminding me of of a, a little shop that you would find on a boardwalk somewhere. Yeah, that just has all this strange eclectic stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it it's sounding like w- with the type of items that you were mentioning. It kind of sounds like it is sharper image for geeks. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. Yeah. Because we're not talking about just any toys here. Yeah. 
No, we have good ones and big ones and expensive ones and and yeah. and crap. Yeah. So so let's 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 talk a little bit about my job specifically. I was uh, I have been with the company for 17 years, and at my last store in California, I was in charge of the children's department for about eight years, eight and a half years. When I transferred to the store in Oklahoma, I wanted the the to be in charge of the kids department, but uh-huh. there was only one person in charge of the kids department, and she was old, and she was cranky, and everybody loved her, despite the fact that she had an attitude and she hated kids. She did have uh, the fact that she was an old white woman. <laughs> and that was enough for people in Oklahoma. Yeah. Sure, she's cranky and doesn't know what she's doing and hates kids, but she is an old white woman, so I'm, I like her. <laughs> so I just kind of waited and hoped that the children's position would be open and available, and eventually it did, and I was in charge of the children's department, and I was in charge of the children's department for about a year. See, the, see, the thing that, is... the. The problem is, is that any image of the old white woman who would be working in a bookstore conjures images of like Aunt B, you know, or a few other, yeah, yeah, just really folksy characters that scared the hell out of me. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I I used to watch Aunt B and just be like, What's wrong with you? Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, she had a lot of health problems, and then later a lot of mental problems, which we've talked about here on the show. Yes. So so I was in charge of kids, and I was so happy. I'm like, yes, I'm in charge of kids. Finally, this is what I wanted. I wanted to be in charge of the children's department, and now I have it, and I'm going to just stay here for another eight and a half years. Uh-huh. And that's when our receiving manager said, I'm going to war. And the store manager didn't want to hire someone new. So they said, well, let's just find someone in the store that can do this part. Someone with experience. Mm -hmm. Let's see. This person's been working with us for four years. This person's been with us for three years. This person's been with us for, holy Jesus, I guess we have to make Steve do it. (laughs) So I have been the receiving manager for a little over two years now. Yeah. And what I do is I come in and I I am in charge of all of the deliveries that come in. Thankfully, we're a bit of a smaller store, so we don't get as many as some of the other stores that are out there. And they get these massive ton of deliveries. So I'm in charge of the deliveries coming into the store. And a, a typical day will will have me get 80 boxes in. In a day, a hundred boxes, a hundred and forty might be a lot. Yeah. So on any given week, Monday through Friday, by the end of the week, my typical carton count is like, oh, I got 320 boxes today. Okay, that's normal. Mm -hmm. Maybe if there's a holiday on a Monday, okay, I only got 275 boxes, but I had a day, but there was a day off, so that's fine. And then some days I'll be like, "Wow, we got a lot. I got four. I got four hundred and fifty boxes this week. Wow, can you believe it? I got five hundred boxes this week. Oh, that that must have been that big sale we were getting in. But now the holidays are coming, mm-hmm. and our our company is doing a thing where we are trying to just anything that is in any way popular, we need to have on the shelf." We, we can't be out of popular things. And so anything that in any way has been successful, we need to have like, okay, here are 80 copies of The Great Gatsby. Here are 50 copies of The Outsiders. Here's uh, 40 copies of every book Stephen King wrote. You know how many books he wrote? He wrote a lot. He wrote a lot. And even ones that we usually don't get a lot of. Like, we don't need 15 copies of The Girl Who Loved Tom Gordon. Oh, God. Don't need that many copies of that. We don't need Mm -hmm. 12 copies of Thinner. No store needs 12 copies of Thinner. No. 200 copies of the new freaking Pioneer Woman cookbook. 
But that's the like, thing about Stephen King, man. Even his worst books are still readable. Yeah. You know? I like Stephen, I like Stephen King a lot. He just can't end for shit. Oh, no. No. He just has an ending a book problem. You know, there are... It's a great beginning and middle, but then like, oh, that's how it's ending? Okay. I still had a fun ride to get to this ending. Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. So, last week... So, I've been telling people, like, okay, we've been getting more stuff because we're getting ready for the holidays. We're getting more stuff, and I really need these this stuff out on the floor. I really need these things shelved. But it's difficult because I don't... I very rarely get help back there. It's pretty much just me. Like uh-huh. there are other stores out there that are bigger stores and it's like, I am the receiving manager and this is my team, <laughs> you know, but it's pretty much just me back there. So it's difficult. So, so we've been getting more and more stuff for the holidays and it, it, it accumulated with last week. Uh-huh. Last week I got a little over 700 boxes. Ooh. It was an apocalyptic week. It was a ridiculous amount. It was a crazy amount. It was an insane amount. So for and, for each box, you you have to like count them up and and each check box them I in. To, each box I have to scan the box in, uh-huh. and then unbox the box, and then sort everything into where it goes on the carts that other people but usually me because there's no one to shelf things anyway Mm -hmm. uh push onto the floor and then put onto the actual floor Uh uh-huh okay and so each box will have somewhere between 25 and 50 different items in the box yeah and each box is somewhere between 20 and 50 pounds yeah Mm mm-hmm and it sucks. And here's the amazing thing about last week. I got over 700 boxes. It's one of the largest single weeks that I've had in my history of working at the in receiving. Yeah. And by that Saturday, we had only 12 boxes left in receiving. Really? So, okay. Yeah. No, it, it was an insane week and I managed to get it. Here's how I did it. Um, I, I, three things I did to help me get through this week. Number one, so much coffee. Yeah. So much coffee. In fact, there was one day where not only was I drinking my massive Kong of coffee, but I got a, uh, I got a Mountain Dew and I, and I added uh, an entire Red Bull to it. Okay. And a bit of what I had left of Jolt. And I just shook it up. And I yeah. said, I'm going to put this in the fridge in case I need it. And then that day I got 200 boxes. And I'm like, okay, I guess I'm drinking coffee Mountain Dew Jolt and Red Bull today. <laughs> so this will be fun for my bladder. So... Way too much caffeine, I guess. Way too much caffeine. Uh, And I, in the mornings and afternoons, because not too many people go into receiving, it's pretty much just me back there. uh, I switched from my massive safe for work playlist to my in no way safe for work playlist. Nice. Okay. So a lot of uh, Childish Gambino and uh, rap songs and metal songs that I would not normally listen to at work. And also, uh, I didn't tell this to anyone, but uh, it also no one bothered to notice. But the only break I would take was lunch. I would literally work like an eight hour and 20 minute day. Good Lord. Yeah, I ended up working like 41 and a half hours that week. Yeah. Two hours, something like that. But I got it done. I got it done and there was hardly anything that week it was, it was a crazy insane week i was impressed that i was able to write the podcast congratulations the I, good on you thank you, thank you. you so should then i was be told, employee of the month yeah mm-hmm. so then i was told 
Oh, Steve, yeah, you think this week is bad. Next week is supposed to be as bad, if not worse. Okay. I, I was told I was told prepare for next week because we're going to be getting in more holiday stuff. Next week is going to be bad. And I am a member of a closed Barnes and uh, closed Facebook group designed only for receiving managers of this company. And so it, it, I consider myself as one of the better receiving managers because I yeah. get to grade myself on a curve. OK. And so I get to see the other receiving managers out there and I get like a, a post from a receiving manager in Jersey who says, my district manager told me that my pile of unshelved boxes is creating a safety hazard. <laughs> and I get a picture of someone from Indiana who has a pile so high that it's almost touching the roof. Oh, my God. And I'm like, oh, so I keep thinking that I'm doing a horrible job. And then I just go on Facebook and go, oh, I'm doing great. <laughs> and, yeah, all of the other stores, the bigger stores, the stores that have DVD departments and have movie departments and have these big, massive sections. Yeah, yeah those those stores are are getting destroyed. But me. Oh, oh, my God. Uh, this week. Uh, hold on a second. Let me pause this. What? 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 Well, and I what? Considering, um, Wizard World. Uh, who's coming? Who's coming to the Comic Con? Are you guys excited because uh, the Undertaker's coming? So I have to leave. Okay. You guys yelled at me like the world was ending, only to have me leave because Supernatural came back on. Y'all suck. <laughs> I just said, yo! So all of the other stores with these big, huge sections, they, this week, the, the current week that we are in, has been hell for them. And just more of the same. And I'm hearing these horrible stories of uh, receiving managers having to work like 10-hour, 12-hour, 14-hour shifts in a single day just to try and get done with the massive amount of boxes that we had. And so it, it's been a shocking week for me. Because it on Monday, I uh, got 90 boxes. 90 boxes. Nice. And then on Tuesday. So it was a kickback Tuesday, day. And then on Tuesday, I got 80 boxes. And, 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 and then nice. so like Wednesday comes along and I'm like, okay, this is either going to be a really light day for me or I am going to die. And then on Wednesday, boom. 64 boxes uh-huh that was yesterday i've had the greatest freaking week of my life at work awesome it's been so great i've just been writing the podcast and listening to music and and not having to work hard and then i feel bad about it and i feel guilty but then i remember the horrible week i had the week before and i'm like oh bitch i earned this yes <laughs> i earned this wonderful week and then finally i heard from the managers and i'm like oh yeah it, it seems it, it looks like this week has been pretty light for you steve but it's going to be really horrible on thursday it's going to be really yeah. horrible on Thursday. you're getting a lot of boxes on thursday and i go great well I'll be sure and warn someone else about that and not me because I will be at home recording the podcast. <laughs> Thursday is my off day. So tomorrow I'm going to have a lot of boxes waiting for me. But yeah. again, if it looks bad, all I have to do is go on Facebook and there'll be some ragged person that's, I've slept only three days. My entire life has been boxes. Why do we have so much Stephen King? And I'm like, okay, yeah, no, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. I'm real good. This has been a great week for me. I've been so happy. Awesome. And I, go, I come home and my family's like, hey, how are you doing? And I'm like, actually, great. <laughs> I'm not sore. I don't need to lie in a hot bath for an hour crying, drinking beer. No, I'm good. The kids want to play outside because I'm great right now. This is a wonderful week. I'm like the after person in a medication commercial. <laughs> nice. Wonderful. wonderful week for me. Wonderful week. Excellent. Yeah, really happy. I earned it. You totally earned it. I did. 
And that is it for notes from the bookstore this week. And remember, you too can save 10% on all of your purchases. And all you have to do is get Donald Trump to tell the truth once. <laughs> once. Mm -hmm. Better get me off this hook, Johnny. My <laughs> brother put me on the hook once. Once. Just to, just to be clear. Just to be clear. We will be attacking, officially attacking Donald Trump next week. Oh, okay. Last week, said that there was a uh, request yes. to uh, write another scathing attack of Donald Trump, and I think I've got, got a good angle for a good uh, semi-long-form attack on Donald Trump. Good. We, so we, cannot, we cannot allow him to be normalized. Oh, hell and, no. And, hell and, no. and so you could see, I mean, if you watch the news, you can see that he is being normalized yeah yeah you know yeah no his calling his doing that shit on a condolence call no that's yeah. un that, no that is yeah. not unfortunate yeah yeah everybody is it, it republicans and christians are so excited to be in power that they are turning a blind eye towards horrible fucking things. Yes. And I'm like, yeah, he's an idiot and he's lying to us and he's ruining America, but we might get to kill all the abortion doctors, so it really is a give and a take. Yes. So I guess, uh, what is he doing sending us into a nuclear war? Yeah, but... Uh, but I might be able to not have to make a cake for a gay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to not pay attention to impending nuclear doom. Yes. Because I really don't want to bake cakes for gays. Well, because because that's more important than them dying because they're going to heaven. Yeah. Yeah. You know, White I mean, they, they've brainwashed themselves about everything else. They might as well brainwash themselves about that. Yeah. Yeah. 